Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. All right, and just a reminder that you can find uh, the image or the whiteboard uh, on at memorizingfarm.com forward slash drawing farm two. That's memorizingfarm, P H A R M dot com, and then forward slash drawing P H A R M two. Uh, so I'm going to start with musculoskeletal. And we're going to go in the same vein that we had with. Uh, the GI is that we're going to try to create some kind of mnemonic to remember all the drugs from musculoskeletal from memory so that this is Jacqueline's idea that wouldn't it be cool at the beginning of the NAPLEX or the NCLEX that you could just get some scratch paper and write everything out and then put it like on the walls or something so that you could have it there and you wouldn't have to just freak out about remembering it. Uh, I think that would be cool because you got six hours to sit there so I don't know if anybody's done that, but that was really clever, I thought. Anyway, so let's start with the pain cave. So musculoskeletal starts here. Um, and then cave, we're going to have two from C, then A, then five from V, I think at least, and then one from E. Okay, so I don't know how to draw a cave. I assume it's like this or something like that and we could have somebody like screaming or something like 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 help or i'm in pain again this is the lab we have no idea how this is going to work so uh, the first thing with musculoskeletal is a lot's going on with prostaglandins so i might start with just reminding myself of that fact and that we're talking about NSAIDs here for the most part um, i'm not sure if that's going to be a good idea to do something like that let's not it's just going to be in the way but prostaglandins are an important part of pain and inflammation and all that so we'll start with the NSAIDs um, like aspirin and there are as many brand names that you can use but we'll use Ecotrin which is enteric coated aspirin you've got ibuprofen uh, which is another OTC uh, and this is Motrin or Advil and then we've got naproxen, which is a little bit goofy because it's a leave over the counter, like alleviate your pain. And then it's naproxen, brand name, um, by prescription. I'm not sure why that is at all. Uh, the C are for the caffeine. So we'll start uh, with caffeine and acetaminophen, so APAP. Um, which is N-acetyl para amino phenolic acid or something like that. Um, and then we'll do caffeine and APAP again. Um, and the first one we'll put is the one with aspirin. So this is brand Excedrin. So you can just get this over the counter. So we kind of stuck with over the counter for these four. Uh, and then this one with butalbital is going to be by prescription, and this is Fior is set. I don't know if Fiorinol is around, they used to be, but the set tells you that there's acetaminophen in it. Um, and then we go to acetaminophen alone. Um, the other drugs that are combination with acetaminophen will cover in the um, opioid part, and this is Tylenol. It probably has other uh, things as well. And if you want to get technical, you want to go to other countries, you can talk about... Um, there's other words that we'll use for acetaminophen, um, and then they'll have other brand names as well. Uh, but usually you'll see uh, paracetamol, P-A-R-A-C-E-T-A-M-O-L, and let me put brackets on this for international. Uh, but paracetamol, I think in Mexico you'll see it, uh, Australia, Europe, 
Uh, not much of a world traveler since I had my three kiddos. Uh, this V is for the five, or maybe it's seven, I don't remember how many. Um, we're going to do a bunch of uh, prescription-only uh, NSAIDs, and the way that I remember it is N meds, so NSAID meds, uh, so nebumatone, which is brand relefin, so you get like relief maybe out of that, meloxicam, the ICAM stem, that's Mobic. Uh, you only have to take it once a day. I think that's the big thing with that. The Totalac, you've got the AC, AC, which is a really small stem. You don't see that too much. That's Lodine. Then you've got Diclofenac. Um, Diclofenac, which is Volterin. There's some other names for it. Sullendac. Um, which is clinaril, and there's another one that's important. Um, I haven't really thought of how we're going to put this in there, but there's another one called indomethacin. Uh, methacin, which has important uses because of its long half-life, indocin, and also it's used for uh, I-N-D-O-C-I-N, so indocin, and this is also used for patent ductus arteriosus, which is when you've got that hole in the artery uh, with a newborn uh, kiddo. So I'm not sure how we're gonna do that for remembering it yet. Uh, and then the E is the second letter in celecoxib, and that's a COX-2 um, inhibitor, and the brand name is Celebrex, like you are celebrating your relief from arthritis pain. And there are two E's in there and two C's, so that's how you remember it's a COX-2 inhibitor. Okay, so those are NSAIDs and so forth. Um, then we're gonna get into this huge opioid thing. Um, and we're gonna go in order of, uh, we're gonna go in order of DEA schedule. So C2s and Emily, Henningsen, who was here before, I used profanity when I first figured out the mnemonic and then she changed it to something a little bit cleaner, more Iowa nice. But it ended up being like my, my, my foot, or I think she said finger, hurts, 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 ouch, ouch. And what we're trying to do is find a mnemonic for morphine, and methadone. And this is used to get some patients off of opioids, so I'm not sure if that really belongs there. Meperidine, okay, so Demerol. And morphine has a ton of brand names. I think like MSIR is one. Um, and then methadone. I'm not sure what the brand name is for methadone. I'll have to check on that. I don't see it that often. Fentanyl, which is duragesic, if you're talking about the patch, or sublimase. Okay. I feel like you end up in a maze because it's uh, pretty strong. And then duragesic, a durable analgesic because it works as a patch. Then I'm not gonna write out hydrocodone three times, but it's hydrocodone with acetaminophen is Vicodin and Lortab. And then you've got hydrocodone with ibuprofen, which is Vicoprofen. And then you've got this kind of goofy one, which is hydrocodone with chlorpheniramine, uh, which is Tussianex. And I know you're supposed to make medicines taste good, but you've got an addicting medicine that tastes like a pina colada. So I'm not sure what the thinking was behind that, but it's pineapple flavored. Then you've got oxycodone with the acetaminophen, um, which is something like um, Perco Percocet, and there's a bunch of other names. And then you've got the oxycodone alone, okay, and that could be something like Oxy-IR or 
oxycontin if it's long acting, something like that. Okay, and that's just the C2s. Um, C3, I think of air conditioning, so acetaminophen, so AC, so acetaminophen. So we'll do APAP to make it easier. I don't know why I'm so much trouble with that. APAP with codeine, and that's Tylenol. You've probably heard of Tylenol 3, but there's a number 2, a number 4, and they have to do with the number of grains. And then I think of a tram, so you've got air conditioning on this tram for tramadol, and that's all tram. And then they added acetaminophen to it, so you can get APAP with tramadol. And that's cleverly named Ultra Set, so the acet or uh, for the acetaminophen. Um, then C4, um, that's the tramadol, and then we've got the antagonist. So let me put the C4 there. So then we're going to have a couple of antagonists. I know there's naloxone, okay, which is Narcan, and then there's naloxone with buprenorphine and that's suboxone so a little bit different okay um okay so then we're going to go to migraine pain and i think i'm going to go i'm, I'm going to start the guy here just because i don't want to waste the space i don't know how long this is going to take but we're going to have we're going to start with headache, pain, and the triptans. Then we're going to go to, uh, we're going to think of this as a joint maybe. Um, so we're going to have something for joint pain like DMARDs for uh, rheumatoid. Then we're going to go outward from that to the bone and we'll have the bisphosphonates and then we'll do the muscle relaxers and there's like seven of them there's a ton of those and then gout so we're going to go head to toe just like you do a head to toe uh, inspection or of a patient or something like that so for the headache and the triptans uh, let's do at least three of them uh, so you've got like elitriptan which is relpax and then you've got um, Sumatriptan, which is Imitrex, and then the easiest one, I guess, is Zolmatriptan, which is Zomig. Okay, so we're going to start with head and then we'll go to joint. Uh, and I'm only going to put three up here. We'll put Methotrexate which is Rheumatrex. And what we're doing is we're going from the non-biologic to then the biologics. And there's a ton of them. There's a, oops, a Batacept, which is Orencia. Okay, so Tocept. Then there's a Tannercept, which is Enbrel. Um, and then that Substem differentiates it a little bit, they're related, but these are both biologics. Uh, and we're thinking about DMARD, so again, disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. We're trying to prevent uh, the joints from fusing and doing terrible things like that. Uh, then we went to the bone, so we could do some of the bisphosphonates. Um, so you've got, um, so alendronate, they've all got that dronate stem, which is Fosamax. And if you know anatomy, what the fossa is, ibandronate, which is um, boniva, they cleverly put in the word bone. Um, and then you've got resedronate, and I'm blanking on uh, the brand name. Maybe it'll come back to me. Yeah, okay. Um, and then we'll go to um, so bone and then muscle. So the muscle relaxers, the best way to do this is kind of create this 
I think of mussels because there's seven letters in it. So that reminds me that it's baclofen, um, carisoprodol, cyclobenzaprine, diazepam, and yeah, I guess you could use most any benzo, but that's the one that we usually see if we're talking about mussels. And then there's a couple M's in here, the, the scalaxin, and then the other M, and then um, Xanaflex is tizanidine. So the first thing I do is kind of try to remember what the, the letters are for the generic. So baclofen is Leorisal, uh, so carisoprodol is Soma, uh, cyclobenzaprine is Flexeril, Diazepam is Valium. Then I think it's Metaxalone. This is Scalaxin. Methocarbamol. Carbamol. Bamol. Bamol. Okay. This is Robaxin. And you can see what they're doing you know, relieve your back, skeletal muscle relaxin, flexin, soma, it just kind of sounds relaxing. I never really got something for Leorisal. Um, and then Tizanidine, and they kind of used a little bit of, of the Xan, a uh, flex, so use that flex again. And so that's how I remember the muscle relaxers. Um, and then gout, you can, Think of it in two ways. You use something acute, and you would use the NSAIDs, or colchicine, which is colchris, and I think of crystals, um, calm down the crystals. And then you really want to do the, so it's, it's hypoxanthine to xanthine, or is it methylxanthine, something like that, to xanthine oxidase, uh, or xanthine, and then you get to this um, middle one, uh, which is uric acid, and then this can go to the urine. Um, and there's a couple ways you can do it, uh, get there. So you can catalyze it, and that's peglodicase, I think. I don't remember the brand name off the top of my head. Peglodicase. This is, and you can remember it's a, a catalyst because of the ACE, but. Um, I, I don't think that the side effects and expense in most cases uh, makes that worth it. Uh, going from uric acid to the urine, uh, so you would use something like probenicid, probenicid, which is benamid. And then you've got the two up here, so you've got the allopurinol and the allopurinol. Okay, you make the joints all purinol. Okay, and then you've also got Fabuxostat, so stat, which is the Uloric. Okay, um, and I think I got everything I wanted to except for that one, um, that one that I couldn't remember the brand name of, uh, Scalaxin. What was the one brand name I couldn't get? Resedronate? Uh, Actinel? Actinel. That's it. Okay. Um, but that's, that's where we are in the drawing pharmacology lab. Uh, we're working on musculoskeletal, trying to memorize it for the uh, aplex, NCLEX, and then uh, we'll start working on some therapeutics. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.